Acts chapter 12. Let me get open here my notes. Oh. Praise the Lord. I think I grabbed the wrong one, but that's all right. Let me get here in my Bible. There we are. Acts. Oh, I'm Mark. Amen. We've been studying uh, uh, New Testament characters, uh, characters in the New Testament, excuse me, and just different people. Today, we're going to study a little bit about uh, this man named Mark, John Mark, Acts chapter 12. Let me get here, and, and verse number 12. The Bible says, And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And let's pray. We'll get started. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we get to be in the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for the Sunday school hour. Ask Holy Spirit of God that you please would speak to our hearts. Pray that, Lord, we would learn something from the Word of God. And just ask that you would help us, Lord, and, and uh, just give us, uh, Lord, something from your word, a truth that we can apply to our lives and learn more about your word, uh, Lord, and increase our faith because of it. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And, I, uh, and excuse me, I'll go back. We're going to learn about two men today and kind of put two together uh, because of the similarities, between, uh, just some similarities between the two. We're going to learn about a man named John Mark, as you saw there in Acts chapter 12. And then let's go over and read... We find this uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse number 14. Colossians chapter 4, verse number 14. There, Colossians chapter 4, verse number 14. The Bible says, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. So we're going to learn about two men uh, in the Bible today, two characters, John, Mark, and Demas. There's not a lot said about Demas. There's more said about John, Mark. Uh, Demas ha is mentioned only three times in Scripture. Uh, Mark is mentioned uh, much more. But um, they both had a, a similarity, but one, uh, the difference is, is, is the end result. And so we're going to talk about both. Number one, both of them were saved. John Mark was a saved man. He wrote the book of Mark. And, and Demas, we believe, also was saved. Both had a part in helping Paul the Apostle. Every time you find them mentioned, Mark and Demas, they are mentioned uh, around Paul the Apostle. They, they helped Paul the Apostle, and uh, they were a, a part of his ministry. And so both of them had a, help, uh, had, a, had a hand in helping Paul. Both of them left Paul. We're going to see both of, them, bo uh, both of them at one time were helping Paul, and both of them left. And uh, they both had that similarity where Paul would take them on a missionary journey, and they both left. But the difference is one was profitable and one was unprofitable. One became profitable in his service and one became unprofitable. We're going to start with Mark. Uh, we know uh, John Mark in the Bible, is, uh, he wrote, he's responsible for the book of Mark. As we see in Acts chapter 12, his real name is John. Uh, his uh, Jewish name there is John. It says, uh, consider the house of Mary the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, uh, just like Barnabas. Uh, was uh, Barnabas was the surname. Uh, J uh, Mark is also the surname of John, uh, but his Jewish name his his Jewish name is John, and Mark is what he is what he went by. Also in the Bible, he's mentioned he's mentioned as Marcus. So you have Mark, and he's also mentioned as Marcus. Um, let's go to Mark chapter fourteen, verse number fifty through fifty two. So we see uh, Acts chapter twelve is the first mention of Mark. Uh, in the Bible, in the New Testament, by name, Acts chapter 12 is his first mention. That uh, is the first time he's mentioned. But in the book of Mark, and I'll just show this to you. Mark chapter 14. Some uh, there's some that believe that in in this uh, portion of scripture we're going to read it here. It says Mark chapter 14 verse 50. And they all forsook him and fled. And there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men lay hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them. Naked. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, theologians, a lot of pastors will tell you uh, we don't really know who this young man is. Uh, he's the the only time he's mentioned in the story of Christ and Gethsemane, and, and and when he's betrayed here. This is the only time this young man is mentioned is in the book of Mark. And so some believe that maybe this is Mark referring to himself, a certain young man. Uh, he doesn't give his name, 
Uh, just like John in the book of John references himself as the beloved disciple. He never references himself by name, but he does reference himself. And so some would say that maybe this is Mark as well. Uh, that he's referring to himself uh, and following the Lord and, and fleeing, but we don't know that for sure. But the Acts chapter 12 is the first mention of Mark by name in the New Testament. So he is, his mother's name was Mary, as we saw, and we believe that he had something to do with Peter. Uh, if you look there, Acts chapter 12, it talks about how that Peter went to Mary's house, and Mary's the mother of John, and she uh, lived in Jerusalem, and so we know that John... Uh, his mother's name was Mary. He lived in Jerusalem at the time and things like that. The name Mark means a defense. The, name, the surname Mark means a defense. And also, again, it's also known as Marcus in the Bible. You look up and there'll be times where he's, ref he's referred to as Marcus, and we'll look there uh, here in a second. Uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse number 10, gives us another insight into who uh, Mark was. Colossians chapter 4, verse number 10. I'll read that for you. Colossians 4.10, it says that Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom you receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. So he's related to Barnabas. We know that as well. So his mother's name was Mary, and he's also related to Barnabas in the Bible. Here is where we see where he's mentioned as Marcus. And if you look there, because it's, uh, uh, Paul mentions Aristarchus, Paul mentions uh, some other men, and then you go in other portions of Scripture, and they're also mentioned again, and Mark is listed uh, among them, uh, but also as Marcus. And so he has two names, uh, goes back and forth in between the two, uh, but he's also the cousin of Barnabas uh, as well. So he's related to Barnabas. He was with Paul the Apostle. And uh, so he kind of had some men that he hung around. He was with Barnabas. Peter came to his house. Uh, he went with Paul the Apostle. And so uh, Mark had quite a, quite, a, quite a few people that influenced him. Uh, he took journeys with Paul the Apostle. Acts chapter 12, verse 25, talks about how that they took him on journeys. It says, And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. So they took Mark with uh, on their journeys, and he was a help to them. But he fell short, Acts chapter 15, verse 37 through 38. We talked a little bit about it when we uh, went through and, and studied Barnabas. Acts chapter 15, verse 37 and 38. The Bible says, And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And so Mark fell short. He went with Paul the Apostle, was with Barnabas, fell short, and did not go with them to the work. He traveled with them, got there, but did not get to work. That's why, again, like we talked about with Barnabas, we believe Paul just did not care for John because Paul didn't like quitters. And, uh, and for whatever reason, we don't know what reasonings Mark was that he, that he fell short, that why he stopped. could have been a family problem. It could have been that he just fell away, maybe he got sidetracked, maybe he had sin. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say, and we don't take time to suppose things. We just know that for whatever reason, Mark fell short. And so Mark, uh, uh, but Barnabas was willing to give him another chance, but Mark is responsible <laughs> for causing division between Paul and Barnabas in the, in, in the New Testament. This man named Mark, Barnabas wanted to help, Paul didn't, and so they, they divided and went ways. And so we see how that uh, Mark is related to Barnabas, He's seen Paul, talked with Paul, and then now, they've, now there's a division. But, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 11, we see eventually that Paul the Apostle uh, did use Mark uh, again. He, he left and did not care for Mark at the time. Barnabas took him, sailed with him to Cyprus. But then, and if I can get there, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 11, the Bible says... Uh, only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And so eventually, Mark became profitable. Mark did go to the work. Barnabas, we believe, did help uh, Mark in teaching him and helping training him. And Paul eventually saw his potential as, a, as an individual, saw his potential to help him in giving the gospel. And so Mark did become profitable. He had to overcome some obstacles, we believe. He had to be trained a little bit more, had to get some character, but he did work hard. And eventually, he went with them to the work. At first, he did not want to go to the work, but eventually, he went with the work. This is why we know Philemon 1, 24. Philemon chapter 1, uh, verse 24. 
and it says, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. And so Marcus did become a fellow laborer. He began to labor. At first, he did not want to go to the work. At first, he did not want to have to do the work of the gospel for whatever reason. But eventually, he became a fellow laborer. He, did, he went and got it done. It took him some time. It took him some, uh, it, it took him some time to uh, be trained. It took him some time to get some character and learn and, and finally make the decision to work. But he got into the work and got to work, and Paul called him a fellow laborer. Amen. Now, and you know if Paul calls him a fellow laborer, Paul was zealous for the gospel's sake. And so to be a fellow laborer for Paul, you, pro you had to work. Amen. And so Paul got in there, and he said he was a fellow laborer. But also... You notice there, Demas is mentioned. This is the second time that Demas crosses paths with Mark, and he's mentioned in the Bible. And Demas was also a fellow laborer. But the difference is, uh, first, uh, 2 Timothy 4.10, the difference is Mark, who went and uh, left Paul for the, and did not go to the work, and Barnabas had to take him and train him some more, Demas was a fellow laborer, but in 2 Timothy 4, verse 10, the Bible says, only Luke is with me. Uh, take Mark and bring him to, with thee, for he's profitable. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 10. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. And so the difference between one is Mark, yes, he left the work, but he got back to it. Yes, he left the work. Yes, he fell short, but he didn't let that stop him. He became faithful. He, became, he, he began to work harder to be profitable to the ministry. Demas started out being a laborer. Demas started out profitable, but got sidetracked by the world and loved the present world. And so he departed, and as far as we know, never returned. Because, the, and a principle here is you can't love the world and serve God. You cannot love the world and serve God. Demas loved this present world, and it sidetracked him from the ministry that God had for him. And the love for this world uh, caused him to depart from the service of God. Well, that's why the Bible says in, in 1 John, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You're not going to love the Father's work. You won't love the things of the Father as long as you have a love and a taste for the things of the world. And so we see how that Demas was profitable at one time, but he left and became unprofitable. Mark was unprofitable, but then became profitable. Uh, the, uh, a good uh, a story in the Bible that it reminds me of, and I just thought of this, and I, I forgot to write it down, and I or I should have wrote it down, but when the Bible talks about how that a man had two sons, and he went to one and said, go work in my vineyard. And he said, I'll go, and went to the other and said, go work in my vineyard. And the other said, no, I don't want to. But then he felt guilty and went and worked. And God says, that he was, it was better for the one that he d eventually did go, even though he didn't want to, even though he decided to, st decided to stay home, but he did go, and the other said he would go and didn't. And it reminds me of John Mark and Demas. John Mark didn't want to go to the work. John Mark didn't want to do it, but eventually got out there, but eventually did the work. Demas did not. Demas was the one that said, I'll go, but loved the present world, and he departed. Amen. And so we see the contrast between the two. We know that John, Mark, and Demas had uh, fellowship together. They both were with Paul. They both helped Paul, but the difference is one, uh, one stayed faithful. So the application, and this is all that we really know about these two men, uh, or except for uh, one last thing I forgot, Peter. We believe that Peter uh, had uh, something to do with John, Mark. 1 Peter 5, verse 13. 1 Peter 5, 13, the... Uh, the last time we find John Mark mentioned, 1 Peter 5, 13, it says, It says, The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so we believe that John Mark also had a relationship with the Apostle Peter. Uh, we don't know that Peter had any children. We know that Peter had a wife, but we believe that he's mentioning this in a spiritual sense. Just like uh, Paul said to Timothy, my own son in the faith. We believe that Peter called Marcus his son in the faith, um, whether it's because, uh, and, and, and well, and, P, and uh, sorry, excuse me, Paul led Timothy to the Lord and called him his son in the faith. And so we believe that maybe Marcus would have been led to the Lord by Peter 
and because Peter called him my son. Talking about my son in the faith. And so we believe that Peter may have had an influence in leading John Mark to the Lord and helping him grow. And so uh, the application that we have today for, the, for these two men that I wrote down some things. Uh, and, I, and I wrote down this. How to be profitable. In studying these two men, we discover uh, not a secret, but we discover a pattern at how to be profitable. One, was, one became profitable, Paul said, bring Mark with me, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. How to be profitable in the ministry. What do we learn from these two, uh, two young men? Number one, to be profitable, you must be present. To be profitable, you must be present. If you're not there, then you can't be profitable. If you're not here, you can't be profitable. Paul said, bring him with you. He needed him with him. He needed him there. Why? Because Demas, just a short while ago, forsook Paul. In verse 10, Demas had forsaken Paul. So he says, you know what? Demas left, loved this present world. He can have it, so bring Mark. Paul needed somebody, but he needed somebody there. Amen? We can't be profitable for the ministry if we're not there. Amen? We can't be profitable to the church if we're not there. We can't be profitable for the Lord and, and being soul winners if we're not there. God needs us to be in our place where God needs us, when God needs us. Amen? And Paul said, if you're gonna, and Paul mentioned here about being profitable, you've got to be with him to do the work. Amen? Your presence. Even sometimes the presence, you may not do anything, but sometimes the presence of somebody there encouraging and uplifting is a work. When we go soul winning uh, and, and we do in Acts, they sent out two by two. And so we have what we call the soul winner and the silent partner. And the silent partner prays while the soul winner is doing or helps and maybe uh, distract children or, you know, kind of sometimes whatever is needed. I know I've been a silent partner for my dad. And sometimes, you know, he'll be leading a mom to the Lord. And so, you know, we'll take care of the kids. You know, maybe just do something with them, keep them quiet. Or, just, or if somebody pulls up, you know, we'll go and talk to them and avoid distractions to allow the gospel to work. And so sometimes just merely your presence, merely you being there helping is more, of a, is more of a work than even sometimes just doing everything, amen? Paul was doing most of the work. Paul was writing. Paul was uh, penning the gospel, and he just needed somebody to write. He needed somebody to help him be his eyes because we know he had poor eyesight, and he just needed somebody present. Number two, how to be profitable, not only be present but be working. Demas left. Mark left the work, but eventually came back and became a fellow laborer. To be profitable, you have to work. It's kind of like when you go get a job. You can show up, but lots of people show up, but don't work. I've been there and seen that, and I can't stand it because then the rest of us have to make up for the people not working. Amen. When you show up to be profitable, be working. Wherever it may be, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's at the church, wherever you get a chance to serve and God says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do with all thy might. To be a profitable individual, we have to be working. We can't just be present. We have to be present, but we've got to be working. Amen. We need to be fellow laborers. Amen. Labor. The Bible calls the work of God a labor. Pray that the Lord would send, pray ye that the Father would send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. We must be working. We must find, it, find something to do. When there is something to do, jump in and help and be a profitable worker. Number three, you have to be faithful. To be profitable for the ministry, you must be faithful. God says, a faithful man, who can find? There are lots of people that will come and be present and work like Demas, but work just for a short time and then leave. Amen. But in the church, in the work of God, for to be profitable, we must be faithful. John Mark may not have been, uh, uh, may not have worked, and may not have been there like he should, but he continued. He was faithful. He kept at it. He didn't fall. Sh he didn't stop, even though he fell short. Amen. He was a just man that rose up again after he fell. Amen. To be profitable, we must be faithful. God says, "A faithful man who can find." An unfaithful man in the book of Proverbs is like a broken foot, the Bible says. Or, I mean, like a foot out of joint, or a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. God says it's like having to walk around with a limp. It's tough. It's hard. You can't do everything that you would want to do. Why? Because of unfaithfulness. It limits the work of God when God's people are not faithful. Paul said he was limited. Why? Because Demas had forsaken him. So he needed somebody to take his place to fill the gap. 
a lack of faithfulness causes a hole in the work of God that God needs somebody to fill. Amen. God says, I look for a man to stand in the gap. There's a gap that has to be filled, but we have to be faithful. Amen. Be there when you ought to be. Do what you ought to do. Serve God faithfully. Amen. And, uh, and, and do that for the work for the Lord. Amen. Because if you don't, you leave a hole. Amen. God says, this, God says uh, like we said, uh, is like a broken tooth. It hurts. It hurts when there's a lack of faithfulness. It hurts when there's uh, somebody that doesn't show up and we have to, and, and things like that. God, whatever you do, working, and, and, I, and I say that because I know when I worked at a job, when people didn't show up, it was tough. But it's the same way in the work of God, being faithful. God wants faithfulness. And faithfulness proves a love for the Lord. Amen. Faithfulness proves a love for the Lord. Demas was not faithful, but it's because he didn't love God. He loved the world. Now, I believe he had a love for God, but his love for the world was more than, what his, lo than his love for God. Now, it says, if you love the world, the love of the Father can't be in you. You can't love souls if you love the world. You can't love the church if you love the world. You have to decide. You have to choose one or the other, and who you're faithful to will prove who you love. Demas was faithful to the world because, because that's who he loved. There are many people that will be in church that will come and work for a short time and then leave, but it's because there's truly not a love for God. Amen. And then number four, how to be profitable. Be around the right people. Be around the right people. John Mark was profitable because I believe he had a relationship with a man named Barnabas. He knew Paul, and uh, we know he had a relationship with a man named Peter. Good men, solid men, godly men that loved God that would challenge him to do more. Demas, all we know is he loved the present world. I promise you Demas had a friend. I promise you that Demas had worldly friends. I promise you that Demas had somebody maybe from uh, his old life that influenced him. But we know that Demas did not hang around the men that he should have, whereas Mark, even though he fell short, got around men of God, got around men that he... Uh, good and faithful men filled with the Holy Spirit of God that would challenge him. If you want to be profitable, you've got to have, you've got to be around the right people. Amen. You've got to have those that will influence you, that will challenge you to do more for God, that will challenge you to live more godly, not challenge you to live less. Amen. Get tired of these uh, churches that, you know, they say that, we're, that you can go to, they, they say they're a church, but yet they don't challenge people to live more for God. They tell you, come as you are and leave as you came. Amen. But God says you ought to come to church, but leave different. Church ought to be what challenges you to live, in a, live godly in this present world. Sadly, when most churches people go to today, they fall more in love with the world than they do with God at church. But it's because the world has become more of an influence in our churches than God has. We have to consciously make a decision to be around people and be around people of God that will challenge us to be more, that will challenge us to do more, that will keep us right. When we make a mistake, they'll look us in the face and say, look, you need to step it up. Look, you need not to do that. Look, don't do that. Look, don't, look, stay, stay faithful. Look, hey, let me help you, amen. That's what we need to be profitable. You can't be profitable being around an unfaithful person. It's an old illustration of an apple. Can't have good apples with one rotten apple and leave them in the same bucket. Amen. You're not going to continue to be faithful. You're not going to continue to be in love with the Lord. You're not going to continue being faithful to the ministry if you're around people that constantly drag you down or constantly uh, cause your desires to not be on Christ. Amen. This is important for children as well. Your children can't have friends that they constantly and consistently hang with that will cause them to think or do opposite of God's word. I know in our, in, 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 uh, when I was growing up on our block, there was always guys that wanted to play basketball in our, in, our, in our court, and Dad didn't mind. But when they came, we had rules. Amen. They couldn't cuss. They couldn't say bad, they couldn't do dirty jokes. They couldn't say uh, bad things, talk about, and I would remind them. Now, Dad didn't have to worry. I reminded them for them. You know, I, I was just that kind of guy. Mitchell, he was just more quiet. Me, they cussed. I'd be like, hey, this preacher's house. And uh, we got to where eventually the guys would come, and uh, the next door kids uh, was uh, he was uh, uh, the high school football coach for Hutch High that's won the seven championships or whatever. It was a terrible man, but 
uh, we tried to give him the gospel, but I led his sons to the Lord, both his boys to the Lord at our basketball court. But they would come, and eventually they got to the point where when anybody else would come, they would tell him, say, hey, fellas, now this is the preacher's house. We can't say those kinds of words, you know. And so I didn't have to do much work after, amen. But we would tell him, you can't do those things, amen. You can go home and do them, but if you're going to come here, you're going to talk right. But as my dad taught me at an early age, if we're going to continue to be profitable for the Lord, we can't constantly be around the world, the flesh, and the devil. Amen. We can be friendly. He that hath friends must show himself friendly, but I, we can't be around the wickedness. When I uh, just finished uh, my last day at work Thursday, I had some people that were uh, sad that I was leaving, and I had some people I know were glad. Because when they were around me, they knew they couldn't talk about things. They couldn't say certain things. They couldn't be negative. They couldn't say cuss words. But it's because I said, if I'm going to live for the Lord, I know I can't listen to the wrong. I can't have, those things, can't have those kinds of thoughts. We have to be around the right people. Amen. Surround yourself with the people of God. Surround yourself with the preaching of the Word of God. Surround your children with, the, with an atmosphere where they can grow and mature for the Lord. Amen. Make the church of God a greenhouse for your children. Make the church of God a greenhouse for yourself. That's why Sunday school is important, teaching and learning the Bible, because it constantly challenges us to do more and learn more about God, and faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So our desire is to be profitable. We want to be profitable. Well, you have to be present, be working, be faithful, and be around the right people. Amen. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, again for uh, what we've learned here this morning, Lord, from the, from the Word of God. Uh, Lord, the time that we can spend learning about people in the New Testament. Uh, Lord, these men that, uh, Lord, we can take and, and learn about. Pray that, Holy Spirit, it was, uh, Lord, a blessing that, Lord, you used it. And that, Lord, uh, you, I know you spoke to my heart, Lord, while studying. I pray that, Lord, it was a blessing. Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us, Lord, to be profitable for the ministry. Lord, there's a work that needs to be done. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to do it. Lord, we love you. We thank you. I ask that you bless the morning service to come. May all that we do and say honor and glorify you. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.